ठीक है सर आप स्टार्ट कर लीजिए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल वेलकम टू स्कूल ऑफ ऑफ लर्निंग दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ दिस सिलेबस दैट इज द इंट्रोडक्शन टू मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स राइट सो जस्ट आई एम शेयरिंग ऑलरेडी शेयर द स्क्रीन राइट सो इट इज डिस्प्ले प्रॉपरली so this is the syllabus one uh, there are four units in this syllabus right so first is the uh, introduction to macroeconomics national income accounting and second unit is the money and third unit is inflation and fourth unit is the closed economy in the short run so today we are going to discuss the first unit that is introduction to macroeconomics right so what are the referred books in this right enter the syllabus these are the referred books that is the abel and bernanke professor that is the macroeconomics pearson education and second book is oliver blanchard macroeconomics 7th edition and third book is don bus sir strat and uh, 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 that is the macroeconomic title of the book is macroeconomic macro hill and other than that books manq book that is the macroeconomics okay learners these are the important referred books okay so now we are going to uh, uh, discuss today's topic that is the introduction to macroeconomics dear students first we need to right understand that what is the economics right and what is the different distinctions of the economics in like you can call it microeconomics and macroeconomics the previous semester maybe you students are learned the microeconomics all the chapters so in this semester we would like to learn that macroeconomics concepts right so that's why in the first unit which we are discussing that introduction to macroeconomics first before going to that macroeconomics we need to study the what is the economics is right already students are learned what is the economics the economics is the studies as how to the society can allocate its limited resources most efficiently what economics economics is is a uh, uh, household management in, in the initial stage you learn that economics there are two words coming from the greek, greek word for the economics word right so that means how to can manage the things how to can manage the decision making about what is the availability of the resources how you can utilize that efficiently so in economic terms economics is the studies as how the society can allocate its limited resources most efficiently so the field of economics has been divided into two distinct area of study one is microeconomics another one is macroeconomics got it so what the microeconomics microeconomics deals with the behavior of individual entities like individual consumers individual market individual farm and household and so 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 on that been in microeconomics you learn the individual decision making about how you can utilize the resources as a efficient manner and other than microeconomics the another distinct of the economics is that is the macroeconomics right what the macroeconomics macroeconomics is concerned with behavior of the economy as a whole with booms recessions economy's total output of goods and services the growth of output and the rates of inflation unemployment and balance of payments and exchange rate okay i uh, uh, so look at it here so that means macroeconomics is concerned with behavior of economy as a whole earlier in microeconomics you learned that how the individual decision making to take according to the resources now what the economy has to take the decision making about to how you can play the resources totally so that is the behavior of the economy as a whole it studies like example sometime total output sometime total goods and services sometime you can learn that what is the growth of output what is the rate of inflation unemployment balance of payment what is the prices in the economy what is the exchange rate what is the export what are the imports so other macroeconomic concept which we have learned on economy as a whole so that in this semester we learn that macroeconomics it deals with the, the economy as a whole so entire this first unit we have to cover these three topics actually what are the three, three topics what macroeconomics is about and what macroeconomists to do and why macroeconomists disagree what is the point so according to the able van and kebo so enter this chapter there are two uh, units there are two chapters in this unit actually first chapter is introduction of the macroeconomics what macroeconomics is how you are studying second part is that is the national income accounting that is next class we are discussing right so coming to the point so here uh, first what macroeconomics is about uh, in this part we learn some top uh, sub topics like uh, definition of macroeconomics and after that you can learn that the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics and after that we would like to learn that basic issues in macroeconomics and second part that what macroeconomics to do macroeconomics macroeconomics to do forecasting and also data collection and analysis macroeconomic research and so so on and third part which we are learn 
that why macroeconomists disagree. Sometimes uh, some economists are agree with the, some theories and some concepts, some economists are not agree. So that is disagree. How different different theories are different the concept which different different economists sometimes it is agree, sometimes it is not agree. So in that case, we have to learn that what is the classical approach and what is the Keynesian approach too. Right? Next coming to first part, we have learned that what macroeconomics is about. What the macroeconomics? The macroeconomics is a branch of economics. It examines the, the economic behavior of the aggregates. That means behavior of economy as a whole. That means it, 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 it examines the economic behavior of the aggregate. Aggregate means some of the some of the all the total income, total output, total demand, aggregate income, total saving, total investment, rise, fall in the price level, and interest rates, so 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 on. What is the point? So earlier microeconomics studied that individual income, individual demand, individual saving individual investment, so 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 on. But now total demand, total supply, total output, and so so on. That means economy behavior of aggregate we can discuss in here. So generally, what is the scope of the macroeconomics to study here? The scope of macroeconomics to study some theories or the some basic concepts are that is the theory of income and employment. Within that, there is a subtopic which we are supposed to discuss that uh, theory of consumption, theory of investment, and theory of trade and business cycles. And theory of general price level and inflation, theory of growth, and theory of income distribution. These all are the, it's about the macroeconomic theories, concepts which we have, right? Coming to, so now we are discussing about what the differences between the microeconomics and macroeconomics. What the microeconomics, what the macroeconomics. First, we can start with macroeconomics because we are, we are discussing macroeconomics. Already we learned the microeconomics the previous semester, right? Dear students, you can understand that macroeconomics, it studies the structure and performance of the economy as a whole. We already discussed. It is discussed or examined the economy as a aggregates. It analyzes the economy as a whole. But in microeconomics, it studies the structure, performance of individual economic unit. It analyzes individual components of the economy. Right? The another point which we are discussing, macroeconomics is concerned itself with choices made by the macro players of the economy. Who is the macro players in this macro level? That is the government. The government itself, it is the central government or state government, local government, panchayatis, whatever it is. Central bank, extra so, so, so on. Right? It is impact of those choices of economy as a whole. How their policies, how their uh, uh, decision making about the entire the economy. So that macroeconomics we are concerned. In micro level, it focuses on the choice made by the individual decision making units of the society. So typically, the consumers and forms. So here you discuss about the choice decision making about individuals. What the individual consumer take the decision about the uh, allocation. What the individual farmers or the producer has to take the decision about the individual. Right? This is about the uh, resources or whatever it is the choices. Right? The another difference is macroeconomics is the top down approach. And microeconomics is the bottom up approach. Top down approach means the top down approach it shows that here whatever we are taking the decision making that first we need to uh, uh, write concepts or the theories that will be a reflect, reflect to the society uh, that society which will be directly it is impact how it is impact with the positive impact or the negative impact finally you can get the result okay that is the top down approach top down approach means right the first result first you can give the policy that policy how it is impact to take the decision making how they're getting the benefited. Suppose example, in this case example, I can give you that uh, if the government has to give in the one uh, program or uh, any kind of, uh, right, suppose example in COVID-19 crisis, the government has to give in the stimulus packages. That means the government has to give the some uh, 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 money transfer to the below poverty level population. They give the policy, it will be reflected to increase the level of income. If they increase the level of income, the purchasing power will increase. If the purchasing power will increase, they can demand the goods and services. So. The policy implemented, the final result is the economy is sustained. That is the top down approach actually. What is the bottom up approach? Bottom up approach is in the initial stage, we are expecting that result actually. We are, that means price, you can fix the price. According to that price, whether you can price increasing or decreasing, whether the demand is increasing, the supply is increasing, the demand uh, consumers are purchased more, according to that, you can, you can increase the price or decreasing the price. Bottom up approach. Bottom up approach means first we can fix the price according to that. Demand increasing or decreasing according to the price increasing or decreasing, they can take the decision making. Bottom, bottom say decision like decision, uh, you can take it. Got it the point? Top down approach and bottom up approach. 
So top down approach is related to macroeconomics, bottoms up approach is related to microeconomics. Next, step. macroeconomics is concerned about the study the overall all price level, overall prices of the goods and services. But in microeconomics, it studies the individual prices. That means the individual price, one, demand, one price of food. But here, aggregate price level, the all, over, all the prices, that is inflation rate we can discuss in macro level. But here, individual price increasing or decreasing. Okay, macroeconomics, it analyzes the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, obviously. Macroeconomics, it studies the economy as a whole. That, that means demand, all the sum of the demand of the goods and services, you can call aggregate demand. And all the sum of the goods and services supply, that is the aggregate supply. Aggregate demand and aggregate supply, these are macroeconomic concepts. And it, microeconomics, it analyzes the individual demand and individual goods and services. That means one, one good, one demand, one price, like you can discuss in micro. Some other way, giving to the examples, you can distinguish between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Suppose in terms of the products and how you can division of the economics is micro and macro is. Suppose in the case of production, if you are talking about microeconomics, the production output is individual industries or businesses. If you are talking about macroeconomics, it's about all total production and goods and services. That means national product, national income, output, total industry output, gross domestic product, gross national product, and per capita income, personal income, and so so so. In terms of the production which we are talking, right? In terms of the price. We are talking what are the differences between micro and macroeconomics. So in macroeconomics, aggregate price level and consumer prices, producer prices, rate of inflation, and so 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 on. In microeconomics, we deal with that price of individual goods and services, price of the medical care, price of the gasoline, and price of goods and goods, food prices and whatever it is. Right? So with example, how you can divide these two distinctions of the economics, micro and macro. In terms of the income, how you can divide a micro and macro? In terms of the income, we are talking about some of the all the income that is you can call as national income. We are discussing next class that that uh, national income is what is the concept and how you can measure national income and so, so on. Okay, next total wages is salaries, total cooperative profits, and so 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 on. And inflation, unemployment, or how it is, right? Later we can discuss. So in microeconomics, distribution of income and wealth, wages in the auto industry, minimum wage, executive salaries, and so 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 on. In terms of employment. Employment and unemployment in the economy and total number of the jobs, unemployment rate, these are the situations which we have observed in recent year, recent uh, pandemic situation. What is the employment rate is? What is the unemployment rate is? What is the job opportunities? So these all macro level we have observed that the employment rate is increasing 26 to 36 percent. Earlier it is 26, now it is 20, 30, 36 percent. Why? What is the reason? The reason is due to the pandemic, there are so many industries sick and industries come down due to the, the demand of the goods and services and so on so, so on in macro level. In micro level, employment by individual businesses, individual industries, jobs in steel industry, job employees, number of employees in, in a farm, and so so on. So, with the example also, you can divide it into different different uh, distinction of the economics, that is the macroeconomics and microeconomics. Okay. Next, coming to the what macroeconomics about in that part, we are discussing third party, that is the macroeconomic issues. What is the macroeconomic issues? The issues that macroeconomists address, they including the following. What are the macroeconomics? In general question, actually, these are the questions which are came into our mind as an economist, as a macroeconomist, right? Dear students, what determines in national longer and economic growth is the one question. Macro because it is we are talking about macro level. What is the growth of the economy in Indian economy? Or you can say Indian economy growth rate. What is the growth of the Indian economy? Is the longer and economic growth is what are the factors to influence? That is the one question issue because our growth is always fluctuated. Sometimes it is increasing, sometimes it is declining, sometimes it is stagnant, sometimes it is going to negative. Because this situation we are observed uh, since 2019. Uh, right, and also earlier, 2000, uh, you can observe that the trends in the growth of economic growth. In 1950 onward, you can observe the growth trends of the economic growth. It is growing, increasing or decreasing. What are the factors to influence? That's what we are learning actually. What are the factors to determine the, the long run economic growth? That is the one question, one issue which we are discussing. Second is, what causes a nation's economic activity to fluctuate? Economic activities like each and every economic activity, you know, that is the uh, it fluctuated growth, unemployment, what are the growth of the sectors, agriculture, industry, service sector, sometimes it is increasing, decreasing. So, nation's economic growth is fluctuated. Why? What are the fluctuations we take in place? In that case, we need to discuss that business cycles. Business cycles related to the long run fluctuations that uh, bones, resistance, recovery, and so so. We will discuss one by one. Okay, this question is arrived due to how the nations has to fluctuate it. 
what causes to nations the economic activity development and third issue which we are addressed and as a macro economies that is the most important uh, uh, problem which we are faced that is unemployment so what is the employment rate how you can calculate how you can measure so how you can uh, right reduce this unemployment what is the policies which we require to to reduce the unemployment what are the causes to unemployment which we have to learn so this is also the basic macro economic issue right next coming to the fourth concept that is what causes the prices to rise right the prices is increasing in real life you can observe that uh, the, the the before covid 19 what is the prices of the goods and services and after covid 19 what is the prices of goods and services so if the prices are increasing yes we are observed in real life in your life maybe each and every student have to take into your consideration your life you are observe what the market is what the economy is what the prices is going on whether the prices increasing or decreasing of course it is increasing why it is increasing what are the causes to increase that we have to address the what are the causes of the price rise so that case you can discuss about what is the inflation how you can measure and how you can control the inflation what are the policies to require right like these are the basic issues which we are discussed next another issue which we are stress with the macro economist that is how is your nascent economy affected by being a part of the international economy that means if the national economy is affected part of the international economy if you are right the economy is produce the goods and services purchasing uh, and uh, whatever it is the uh, uh, exporting import is taking place within the domestic country that is not affected if sometime if you are right uh, exchange the goods and services to the rest of the countries other countries so how it will be affected to to the nascent economy right so that means we are discussing about open economy closed economy there are two parts closed economy means whatever it is the economies exports and import taking place exchange of goods and services taking place within the domestic country that is you can call as closed economy open economy is our economy is open you can export any goods and services goods and services to any country or rest of the countries to import the goods and services exports import were taking place in rest of the country that is international economy international economy so if you are going for international economy how will be affected the nascent economy so that we are discussing if national international economy is taking place what is the our economy is affected that is also more important next last point which we are discussing that can the government do anything to improve economic performance yes of course so uh, what uh, what the government is role to play the government has to to to, to uh, sustain the growth and to improve the growth rate sometimes whenever they can find that uh, the fluctuations of the economy so of course the government has to do there is economic performance that through there are two policies the macro economic policies like uh, monetary policy and the uh, fiscal policy and so on right so according to these basic issues which we are identified in the macro level according to these basic issues we are uh, uh, key macro economic issues more detail that is the uh, uh, six macro economic issues are long run economic growth business cycle unemployment inflation the international economy macroeconomic policy the long run economic growth okay first we discuss that uh, what is the long run economic growth right key issue which we are stressed we already discussed that you know what is the long run economic growth long run economic growth means how the fluctuated in the economy the basic issue so what is the economic growth we are a uh, uh, number of time we are discussing economic growth economic growth economic growth is the the increase in the amount of goods and services produced in the economy over power period of time generally there are two terms one is the economic growth and economic development right so economic growth is, is increasing the level of amount of goods and services produced within a period of time or economy over period of time right and economic development the economic growth plus structural and economical social develop social development of the economy over period of time so some countries like developed countries some countries like under developed countries which we are talking sometimes we are we are up to some newspapers and all so economic growth means the countries have the highest level of the growth in terms of all over development that means that countries you can call it developed countries if the some countries have long run economic growth is high so that that countries you can call it economic growth countries are developed countries those countries very less economic growth rates are economic growth is less that uh, over period of time growth is not that much increased so there is a fluctuation of technical place that countries you can call it economic development example economic growth example of developed countries example japan right uh, usa singapore Thailand, that countries can call as developed countries. 
what about other countries developing countries developing countries like india sri lanka pakistan uh, some other countries so sri lanka and so so on so economic growth is one parameter the longer an increasing level of growth rate or the longer an increase level of amount of goods and services produced in a over period of time it is taking place the quantitative change is taking place in the economy so economic growth is term, uh, measured in terms of the real gross national product that is one called as gnp nowadays we are observed the newspapers gdp growth is this much level at present right 7.8 7.3 7.5 so so 7.3 earlier the, uh, in 2011 and uh, uh, well the highest level of the growth rate 10% growth rate right and uh, 2000, uh, before covid 19 the growth rate is 8.5 8.7 now the growth is 7.3 7.4 so the fluctuation were taking place actually when the country is developed when there is a longer and economic growth is taking place over a period of time that is uh, the country is growing or the country is developing so 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 that uh, it is different from the economic development because economic growth is different from the economic growth because it is economic growth including the structural economical social changes taking place in the economy so here we are discussing longer and economic growth was fluctuated what are the factors to to influence the that longer and economic growth these are the factors section dear students you can understand that the factors which we are influence the longer and economic growth are the availability of the resources efficiency of the labor force efficiency of the capital and the rates of investment is saving in the economy right first availability of the resources the exploitation of the natural resources increase in the workforce capital stock contribute to the greater output it will be increase the long run so availability of the resources either the either the human capital or either the resources like uh, workforce resources capital resources whatever it is it is it is uh, influenced to, to increase the greater output second source efficiency of the labor force of course the education training experience increase the average labor productivity more labor productivity particularly the working force participation will move or uh, will greater the output or greater the economic growth and the next is efficiency of the capital capital in terms of improvement in knowledge technological change increase in productivity of land missions buildings and so 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 on right so so here we are discussing that right so what is the rates of investment saving in the economy other factors which we are in, which we are influenced that longer and economic growth are rates of investment and saving in the economy right so we can look at what is the rates of investment savings that means more investment will leads to more economic growth rate more saving will leads to more economic growth so we are discussing each and every concept in coming classes okay so these are the factors which will influence the uh, economic growth rate long run second issue basic issue is that is the business cycle how the national economy fluctuated so business cycle which we are discussing what is the business cycle so uh, already we, we discussed earlier and increasing the availability of the resources to improve the efficiency help to country to register it and upward trend in the long run economy what is the point so business cycles are the long run the short sorry short run fluctuations that you can call it business cycles so this is not only for economic growth but also for other macroeconomic variables such as inflation and unemployment it will be displayed so what is the definition of the business cycle the business cycle is defined as the more and less regular pattern of the expansion and contraction economic activity the path of trend growth suppose example here there is a business cycle diagram i think it is visible clearly so look at here the, uh, first there is a line that line you can call as uh, uh, long run growth rate how it is going okay so this is the uh, line expansion initial state the growth rate is increasing certain time and some of the growth is going to peak peak means the growth is increasing more at, at maximum level certain level after that the growth rate will decline again there is a growth rate declining that going to whatever the growth is minimum growth the line is the, this is the line you can say that the minimum growth it is going to recession when there is a the trend of the declining growth rate that is called as recession okay when there is increasing level of the growth rate that is expansion the expansion recession that is very impressive or that is very important in every country whenever the growth rate is going to the minimum level of the growth rate below the growth rate so that is that means the country is going to depression so when there is a negative growth rate it will take place so up to this line that is a positive growth rate above that line it means positive growth rate the growth rate is increasing or sometimes it is decreasing that's fine you can sustain but when there is a growth rate is below that line that means the country is going to depression the depression will take place because of the negative growth rate this situation which we are observed at the time of the covid 19 pandemic situation there are so many times in indian context we are talking about 2008 the crises and uh, even through first world war second world war also uh, we are facing the low level of the gdp growth rates depression is depression and after some years 
the growth is fluctuating, improving, improving. That is, the, you can call it a recovery. When the growth is improving, that is, the, you can call it a recovery. And after some some time, the growth is improve more. There is expansion. Expansion means the growth is increasing tremendously. And after that, the growth again the fluctuated. So the fluctuations were taking place in the short term period. That is, you can call it business cycle. Okay. So uh, uh, you can observe during the past five years, we often came across the term recession in the social media. The recession simply refers the downward pace of the business cycle. Downward pace of business cycle below the power, below the growth rate, minimum growth rate. Particularly, which the national output may be falling and growth very slowly. Right. So this is the business cycle, the fluctuations were taking place in the every country. Okay, that is the macroeconomic issue. The another important macroeconomic issues are that you can call unemployment. Okay, unemployment is occurs when the people are without work or activity seeing work. What is unemployment? Unemployment is the rate at which the people willing and able to work, but they couldn't get the work. Simply say. Another term you can say unemployment is a willing and able to work, seeing uh, seeking work, but they couldn't get in the work. Simple. That is. So the prevalence of the unemployment in the economy measure unemployment rate. How you can calculate it? Unemployment rate. You can calculate it. Unemployment rate. Unemployment rate is at the percentage by dividing the number of employed individuals by all individuals currently in the labor force. Suppose unemployment rate equals to number of unemployed persons upon by labor force. Labor force means both including employed and unemployed persons. What is the point? So both num number of employed and unemployed person is labor force. So first number of unemployed persons. How you can get it? This number of unemployed person. You can get it. How many people are working? Okay. In employed and unemployed. So you can get the unemployment rate. Now unemployment rate is 27 point something. This is increasing tremendously. Why? There are so many reasons. So India is facing uh, still under under uh, developed country, under developing country because uh, in place, uh, unemployment is also another basic issue. Right. Next, another basic key issue is that is the economic indicator inflation. Right. What is the inflation? Inflation is the average level of the prices increase over a period of time. I simply say the percentage increasing the average level of the prices over a period of time that is called inflation rate. Always we are observed in newspapers, TV news, and social media and so on. Right. So the price is increasing because of there are so many policies and so many factors to influence. Right. So factors are like consumer behavior, like purchasing power party is one factor. What is the purchasing power party? The consumer are we are we are increasing our purchasing power, increasing our demand for the goods and services. When we are increasing, whenever we have the more income, we have income, you can consume more goods, you can consume more goods that will be reflected to increasing level of prices. OK. If the inflation rate is consumer price 10 percentage, then one average prices of the item is consumer by rises by 10 per year. Okay, that means inflation rate is increasing 10 percentage. The average prices of the item should be also it is increasing by 10 percentage. Sometimes this inflation you can call different types of inflation. Sometimes we are facing high level of the inflation. That means the price level is increasing more than 50 percentage. That is the high, high inflation or higher inflation you can call higher inflation. Inflation, walking inflation, dipping inflation, right? Hyperinflation, different types of inflation we are studying. There is one concept, inflation concept. At that time, we are discussing detail. Okay, so inflation rate is also one basic indicator of the economic growth. That's what we are discussing. The inflation opposite word, that is the deflation. What is the deflation? The deflation is the fall in the average level of the prices. So increase the level of prices, you can call inflation, and decreasing level of average price level, you can call deflation. Opposite. So when we have to find this, whenever the prices are declining, at that time the government used to different policies. Whenever it is the price declining, at the, when there is a low level of the income levels in the economy, low level of money supply in the economy. So there is no money, there is no purchasing power. There is no purchasing power, the price will. Uh, there is no demand of the goods and services. There is no demand of the goods and services, the price will fall. Okay, even supply is more. So the deflation also nothing that adjusting. It is it is the kind of falling prices due to the intensity of the uh, all the goods and services. Okay, next is another important issue is that is the, the international economy. Okay, today every major economy has an open economy. Open economy is the economy is open. Everyone can purchase it and take it and export and import. That is the open economy, right? Which means that it has extensive tra uh, trading and financial relations with other nations. Like example, in India, you can export goods and services to the rest of the countries like USA, Japan, Singapore, some other countries. And also, you can import some raw materials from the rest of the country. So that means 
whenever you can open the your economy export imports imports for taking place from the rest of the countries that you can call as a national economy so point is how it is reflected to the within the economy growth yes the economy growing increasing because more export right will leads to getting more income levels more income level will lead to positively national income is increasing right so that will be positive impact in the economy growth what is the point so the macro economy studying international economy would be interested in knowing how the economic links among nations such as international trade borrowing affect the performance of individual economies the world economy as a whole okay next last point is what the macro economic policies are an extremely important factor affecting economic performance of the uh, country is that is the policies pursued by pursued by the government macro economic policies are affect the the performance of the economy as a whole over a long period of time of course in every uh, uh, country the government policies are major role to play to to performance the economy as a whole so generally in every country they are using two policies two major policies which are taken one is fiscal policy another one is monetary policy what is the fiscal policy fiscal policy is the policy is concerns about the government spending and taxation spending and uh, income you can say expenditure and uh revenue revenue and expenditure and fiscal policy is determined at the level of the national state and local level as well what is the point what about other policies there is the monetary policy what is the monetary policy monetary policy is the policy related to supply of money control supply of money by the country central bank what are the factors to determine the determine the rate of growth of the money supply in the country the factors are the supply of money and demand for money okay so the monetary policy the policy related to control the supply of money how the control supply of money it depends upon the factors to influence the economy they they the, what the economic performance is going so this policy is which you are discuss okay this is the first part of the macro economic what macro economics is what macro economics is actually is about to second part which you are discussing what macro economics to do in general way we are talking about the macro economics to do teach macro economics in college or school level they engage in macro economic forecasting and work as analyst to government private organizations and other research arena of macroeconomics collect data related to macroeconomic variables these are the general observation which we are in real life right according to these generalization you can point out that there are four basic uh, right uh, 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 points which we are macroeconomics has to do for the macroeconomics sometimes forecasting forecasting means predicting the performance of the economy right that means the economist has to trying to forecast the performance of the economy will concerned with questions such as how the uh, the economy growing during the covid 19 crisis is. right predict during the covid 19 what is the economy is it negative growth is positive growth is it is increasing and after covid 19 what the economy is growing it is increasing due to the some policies taken by the government or some other business organizations should taking place some other factors to influence so forecasting forecasting means it trying to predict predict the long run fluctuations or short run fluctuations what is the point so how the economy is sustained or it is it is, it is uh, perceptive to uh, that is the pessimistic and scenarios whether it is the increasing or decreasing or this is forecast forecast means predictions you can say predictions means you can observe whether it is increasing or decreasing according to your policy as a macro economist always observe as a forecasting next concept is macro economic analysis macro economic analyst monitor the economy think about the implications of the current economic events suppose example uh, private sector organizations like uh, banks large corporations uh, they are observed that they analyze that how the job of the analyst to, to try to determine the general economic trends to their employees or investors and some public sector uh, agencies to uh, analyze the what the government and what the world bank or international banks are to main functions they are working and to analyze the, what is the policy making this, uh, about the, the government to improve how it is work whether the growing increasing or whether the growth is increasing according to the policies whether it is decreasing all the analysis the analysis which will taken place on the basis of data quantitatively how you can analyze the data quantitatively earlier growth rate is this much level 9% to 10% now the growth rate is 1 percentage but during the covid 19 only 2 minus 2.5 percentage or 4 percentage this were how you can analyze you can analyze the it has to the quantity to data the data should be you can collect it and you can uh, you can analyze the the things which you are taking this next another point is macro economic research the macro economists should do another basic role to play engage the research research means search for a new things search for a new knowledge 
a search for a new discovery as you can say that means the macro economists who to, to, to search for suppose example in covid 19 crisis we are observed that the economic growth rate is declining how you can find you can find that there are so many factors to influence the particularly the people are low income levels the low level level of income it leads to there is no purchasing power there is no purchasing power leads to the demand for goods and services declining declining the demand for goods and services that will leads to the the the, the uh, supply of output will decline supply of output will reflect to the factors of production will decline less factors of production will place and that will kind unemployment is increasing really unemployment rate is increasing how you can say there is a research there is a article there is a publication there is a uh, reports which were taken place during the particular period so the research according to that research the government has to take the decisions or the policies to which we are control that particular problem how they control they can give the policies like fiscal policy and monetary policy fiscal policy they can increasing their income levels how they increase income levels they increase their income levels on the basis of they giving the stimulus packages that is they are given in through the 19 crisis sorry 19 pandemic situation they are given the stimulus packages to all the household sector farm sector and other industries service sector so so on so that their income level increase increase the level of income level so that their demand would again the employment would take increase so like that the researcher has to give the some policies or the suggestions to improve the what economy is so that's why macro economy has to such new things new policies new discoveries it will help to to increase the over long period of time that growth will automatically increase next data development data development is also several macro economists to involve uh, that uh, the processing of the collection of the data as an economist we have to collect the data to analyze the data to 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 uh, show the what is the growth of the country or the growth of the other factors too. okay and the last uh, is the concept of the last point in this unit is macro economists disagree I already discussed with you some economists agree some economists disagree what is the agree what is the disagree that in that case there are two words which we are using that is the positive economics and normative economics right so we can provide the insight into to macro economy disagrees that is distinct between positive and normative economics okay so what the positive economics is positive economics is express what is normative economics is express what should be that means example in the covid 19 in covid 19 crisis positive economists said that what it is that is the covid 19 that's it they couldn't analyze anything positive economist normative economics what should be how it is came it expressed that what should be that means what it is happening how it is affect in the economy and how you can control it is showing that suggestions and all so that is normative economics okay and also positive economics is based on the cause and effect of facts but normative economics it is based on the ethics that means positive economics means what is the cause what is the effect they can express the positive economics but normative economics it simply says that in ethics right another difference is positive economics it deals with actual and realistic situation and uh, normative economics it is idealistic situation okay next difference is it can be verified with actual data and normative economics it, it, it can be verified with not actual data simply said positive economics in this value judgments are not given natural between ends and normative economics in this value judgments are given okay positive economics deals with how an economy problem solve but normative economics deals with how an economic problem should be solved how an economic problem solved how should be solved this problem there are two differences who is this two differences has given there are different different economists or approaches which we are taking place okay there have always been many schools who thought macro economists but the most important and undering uh, disagreement in positive issues in two schools are on section one is the classical approach another one is the keynesian approach what is the classical approach this is classical approach means classical economist theories and the keynesian theories means this is the modern economist theories actually classical theory and keynesian theory keynes the modern theory so classical economist who particularly adam smith the father of economist we know very well the classical theory is uh, can be traced back to early 1776 the scottish economist adam smith he published his book in 1776 and inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations in this book they can mainly they can give the idea that free market are guided by the invisible hand which operates throughout the price mechanism so that means the entire the economy is, is follow the free free market mechanism right that means whatever it is the price they have to take in place and only the one factor to influence the entire output that is the labor factors of production there are four factors of production one is labor land organization and capital very the point okay so classical economists stress the 
free market mechanism so that only leverage the only factor to influence the entire output okay coming to keynesian approach keynesian approach is the another uh, modern economist theory it developed uh, that theory by the jm keynes actually in his theory 1936 general theory of employment and trust rate and so particularly this theory is, uh, came, came back in uh, 1930s actually okay so keynesian economist is uh, uh, disc- uh, uh, that is disagree with the classical economist theory so keynesian theory has to to uh, uh, divide uh, uh, or postulate the, the another theory in modern economist the uh, uh, growth rate is uh, taking place not only one labor but also other factors also influenced so this chapter is fourth chapter we are discussing fourth unit actually fourth unit that is keynesian theory of income determination and classical theory classical theory of income determination also we will discuss in the coming classes right so this is what we are discussing today's class for the unit one first part okay so up to this uh, uh, if you have any kind of doubt so uh, i can uh, clarify it if you uh, uh, drop your uh, question and answers here in the qa box okay uh, yeah i hope you people are enjoy the class right yes i think uh, uh, sanjay kumar has to to make an announcement yes there is no uh, questions as of now sir please share uh, class p uh, pdf if possible in this whatsapp group okay let you know if uh, yes i join this whatsapp group i can uh, uh, send you the whatever the ppt yes uh, is there any questions very good afternoon to all and the sol study material is not sufficient for the exam no the sol study material is good uh, you can refer to that material because the well uh, uh, experienced professor has prepared that uh, material no doubt you can refer to sol material other than that there is a books which we are given by the delhi university that is the refer book there are three refer books in the initial stage which we are discussed okay other than as well you can refer that books so that you can get the more knowledge of particular topics because economics always we learn there is a case studies or there is a theoretical part actually theoretical learning right that what i uh, discussed with you next uh, sir can i uh, keep us no so there must be some other books that is uh, uh, we can't uh, prefer that okay any other question uh can you please uh, provide as anyone uh, at least uh, latest version of the reference book so uh, dear uh, student latest 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 version of the book is um, only one book which we are sufficient that is man q book ng man q right ng man q uh, macroeconomics title of the book okay any doubt related to, uh, concept or the topic apne uh, jo bhi samjhaya bilkul samjha rahe hain ठीक है आप हिंदी मीडियम है तो हिंदी मीडियम में इंग्लिश मीडियम इसलिए इंग्लिश मीडियम में डिस्कस किया हिंदी मीडियम के लिए तो मैं भी अलग हो सकता है हिंदी मीडियम में है तो बाद में हम लोग डिस्कस करेंगे ठीक है तो दोनों बाइलैंग्वेज भी डिस्कस कर सकते हैं तो इंग्लिश मीडियम ज़्यादा बच्चा होगा इसलिए मैं इंग्लिश मीडियम में डिस्कस किया ठीक है क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड एनी क्वेश्चन सर लेबर इज सुनाती पर लेबर क्या होता है तो देखो बच्चा Labor is the one individual, okay? Individual labor, but we are talking about labor force rate sometimes. Laborer, right? Labor means individual. Laborers means plural. So if you are talking about individual, that is the microeconomics. If you are talking about macroeconomics, so that's why labor force participation. What the labor force participation? The average number of the people which you are willing and able to work, but they couldn't get the work. So that is the labor force. How many total number of the persons am unemployed are employed? Sorry, employer, labor force. Okay. So, which book we are purchase? So, as well material you can follow. Other than that, so there are soft copies also available. That man Q book and uh, uh, Dot Bus book and also other books. Okay. Yeah. Any other doubt? Let you know. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Anand. I think uh, if you have any doubt regarding this class, so I can discuss. Please drop your message here. so to next class we are discussing that you know uh, uh, income national income accounting that means uh, first unit second part national income what is the national income what are the measures to measure the uh, methods and measures of the national income we will discuss in next class all right all right thank you uh, if you have any doubt you can drop your message here otherwise you can discussing uh, any kind of uh, right topics in, in this area if you have any doubt generally we are discussing this concept which is a fundamental concept right right so you must have to learn that right what is the macro economics is right yeah some student asked me that priyanshu kumar dubey so what is current account deficit see first of all you can understand that 
So what is the deficit and surplus? Okay. So generally, uh, whatever the topics today we are discussing, just introduction of the macro, some concept which we are discussing. Okay. So deficit and surplus, which you are first to learn. So when it is surplus, when there is a exports imports were taking place. Okay. Exports means goods and services to export to other rest of the country, and uh, you can uh, import the raw materials from the rest of the country. Whenever the exports is more than to whatever the imports, then the the, the, the economy is uh, there is a surplus, right? When there is the imports is greater than to whatever the exports, then there is a deficit. Current account surplus current account deficit current account deficit means there is a balance of this concept which we are discussing there is a balance of payment concept okay so i think uh, uh, next class uh, second tomorrow class we'll discuss national income after the follow the class we are discussing the balance of payment concept so current account deficit and capital account deficit which we are discussing whenever the export is uh, uh, less than to whatever the imports so imports is more than whatever the export so you can get the deficit current account deficit okay so that next any other questions we will discuss in uh, then we ask the uh, what is the difference between GDP and GNP? Yes, uh, Priyansu, uh, uh, this concept we will, we will discuss tomorrow class actually. So we'll discuss the what is the concept of income. There are four concepts of income that is GNP, GDP. Okay, so GNP is the gross national product. GDP is the gross domestic product. Gross national product is uh, uh, it, it, it is uh, the market value of all final goods and services produced in an economy with NFIA, net, net packed income from abroad. That means the payment which we are received from the rest of the country, the payment which we are taking place in the outside country. So both payments and receipts also include that is the GNP. So there is no including of this NFIA. That means GDP minus NFIA. That is the GNP minus NFIA. That is the GDP. Okay, we will discuss again tomorrow. National income concept, right? Yeah. Some students are asking, uh, sir, depression place in the Sri Lanka. Yes, is it correct? Yes. Now nowadays we are observed the the Sri Lanka is facing the depression, the depression period. Right, the government was also looking at uh, offline clauses, uh, right? Uh, circular flow of income, yes. Sir, you teach circular flow of income. Yeah, tomorrow we have time, definitely I will teach. Okay, yes. So tomorrow, don't miss the class because tomorrow is a very important concept that will be uh, uh, reflected to other topics too. Okay, so please join tomorrow. Class. Thank you, uh, thank you one and all. So still if you have any kind of doubts, yeah. So, what is the syllabus? Syllabus is uh, discussed in the first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anandar. Yeah. Take care. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.